Hi guys and welcome back to the shop. A lot of questions been posed on our Instagram and as well as our YouTube account asking us what happened to the E30 M3? What happened to the E36 M3? Don't stress boys, there's another video coming out quite short and a, a quick teaser on the E30 M3 she cranked over. That is good news. But uh, in terms of the E30 M3, we're busy getting the brakes finalized. We're busy. So there's a lot of other stuff that needs to take place before I can actually physically test drive the car on the road. I want to make sure the brakes is right. I want to make sure the duty bio system on the brakes is correct. That we have enough pressure going to the front. We have enough pressure going to the rear. And I don't overpower the rear because remember, I did a Z3 M coupe suspension on the on the E30 M3 and uh, that is one of the concerns that I have. But in today's video, we turn to the 1M Coupe. The 1M Coupe also got a few mods and it got a, some mods from a GTR 34. That Well, the inspiration came from a GTR 34. But let me take you guys through exactly what we have done on the BMW 1M Coupe. And we've tackled the gearbox, we've tackled uh, the clutch as well. So we have some exciting, exciting stuff. Without further ado, let me take you through guys what we have done on the 1M Coupe. We haven't done really much in terms of the aesthetics of the of the physical engine bay. The only thing that we did do was we mounted the PR coils that they used to sit here. We mounted the PR coils on top of the plenum. And the other thing is we tapped into the vacuum. And the reason we tapped into the vacuum is twofold. The first fold being is that is that when you have a triple pack clutch, so don't worry all of the wires, that's uh, that's the other modification that we did. So when you have a triple pack clutch, your clutch becomes extremely hard. It becomes hard like pushing onto a rock. So let me take my slippers off because you guys make fun of my slippers. You can see just how hard the pedal is. You can see, yes, it's the pedal is exceptionally hard. It's, it becomes a lot of, there's a lot of effort that needs to be applied to. So inspiration from the GTR 34, the R34, what they have on the clutch cylinder is that they have a, a small little brake booster. And what that brake booster does is it has fluid, brake fluid that runs through it, but it also has vacuum. So the pressure of the vacuum and the pressure of the fluid assists the release bearing on the gearbox itself. Now what that does is it allows the pedal to be much more softer. Prior to this, in the past, there was only two solutions for you to have a softer pedal feel on a triple pack clutch. Now a triple pack clutch is basically, you normally have one single clutch in a car, but as the horsepower increases, that clutch can't hold the power, or when the Newton meters increase, the clutch cannot hold the power. So what that means is that you need to actually put three clutches in the car in one housing so that you can hold the power itself so this clutch i think it's rated for about 1200 or 1500 horses i don't think i'm even going to get to that amount but i'd rather be safe than sorry but the consequence to that being is that i had a harder clutch and i lived with it for the past three years and this time around i want to daily the car a lot more i want to bring the car uh, more to some shows and so forth so i want the car to be a bit more drivable and i don't want it to be a trailer queen either so the only other option was to draw the inspiration from the r34 as well as the guys who supplied it to me to told me that this particular option will work so let's get to the option itself so what we did was we mounted an additional brake booster here at the back. Now traditionally a brake booster would be this massive piece of exercise that you would put here and the booster itself would be enormous, tall, long, oh, it would be ridiculous. But it's quite a simple system that we have going on here. So we have the bracket mounted to an OEM location on the top of the boot and then we have the booster itself. And this line here is actually drawing vacuum from the intake manifold. So this assists the booster, the vacuum, and then we have fluid that runs through all of these particular veins here. Now in the past, you could not or, or rather, guys, I don't know if anybody has thought of it or things like that. I think, uh, I think we're the first, but I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, um, in the past, what they would do to, to soften the clutch would be they would put a rounded release bearing. So, your, so you have your fork that runs across your gearbox. And in the center, you have a release bearing that actually pushes onto the clutch. And it's normally flat. But so having a flat surface touch against a flat surface is hard. But if you have a rounded release bearing, what that does is it, uh, it distributes the pressure a lot more easier onto a flat surface and it can round itself off, which makes it a little bit softer. That was the first option. The second option was to, to do a hydraulic release bearing. So this year, 
follows suit with the hydraulic release bearing in that you also have fluid running through but you don't have fluid running into the gearbox through the hydraulic release bearing to assist it to push onto the clutch so what we have here is that we now tap on to so what we have here is we now tap onto the slave cylinder that actually pushes the fork forward we tapped onto the slave cylinder in terms of the hydraulics so we now have that there but the vacuum of the of the booster itself drives the slave cylinder drives the slave cylinder to make your pedal actually much softer once the shifter of the car is in we will then do it uh, uh, you, you guys have seen prior to this how hard the pedal was so once we've done that there we've obviously come through and then we'll see how softer the pedal is with the car on because when the car is on vacuum is then applied to the booster itself and when that's applied to the booster the pedal becomes much softer and we have a pretty clean install and this will be up on our website yes we're going to be having a website soon i know i've been saying that but this will be up on our website it will be for sale and we will be couriering it countrywide so for all the guys with the 2JZs, the RB26s and all the big bills with triple pack clutches hit us up, we'll be able to supply you with one of these boosters now, the other modification on the car itself you will see here, we got the wires we no longer have a JB4 on the car what we have, we have a GFB3 controller and this GFB3 controller is controlling the boost on the car and we have a standalone flash, but that will be a separate video that will take you guys through this particular exercise, let's get to putting this particular shifter in on the inside and then we can see how is it going to look, oh boy she's going to look hell of a racy so this is how the shifter came packaged it's a absolutely brilliant piece of bullet aluminium it mounts to the factory points in the car itself one and two there's actually two mounts that's already there and currently what's there is i'll show you on the car is actually glue that holds the carpet in place and this mounts at the back now this shifter is exceptionally short and then the other thing is that it has a locking system so it locks and it center locks so if if you move if you move it from left to right okay i'll get one when it's in the car we'll do that particular example so i just removed this carpet here and these are the holes that i was talking about one there and then there's the other hole there so it's like almost bmw wanted us to do this particular modification i guess a big lesson learned you know i said it was going to take us 20 minutes i never said inshallah firstly i was wrong at that one and secondly it took us nearly two hours, two and a half hours. We had to drop the heat shield. We had to drop. Uh, there were so much, so many things we needed to drop on the car. I even went and I took a shower and I came back. So I got new clothes on. So it's not the next day. That's how long it actually took us to do this here. But nonetheless, the shifter is in and she shifts gloriously. So here you can see. So she sits about 360 mils above the tower. You can see there 360 mils above the tower so I, th I think that's from the base up until here i'm gonna do something nice around here but for now this will be neat enough just to hold it in place but technically let me see if i can get this thing off have a look at these shifts right so if you if you need to engage reverse you you need to so it's a lockout meaning from this point you won't get reverse there is no reverse right what I like about it, it reminds me of like um, a Mercia Lago, a gated Mercia Lago. So you get that clunky noise out of the gearbox. So, you, so let's do one to six, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. But you see that mechanical noise, that mechanical action that's taking place. It is glorious. Now, if you want to get to reverse, you got to do that. It's a bit of a, a tough one. you got to do this here. Clearly, race cars don't go into reverse. And that is reverse. So, you release the lockout with this here. So, now, it's back locked in place. It won't go. So, as you can see, it's a self-centering one. So, you do one. If you do two, or if you go into neutral, it's it self-centers. I can do three right and then she's self-centered meaning she always comes back into the center so that's one two three four five six oh i'm loving this here 
So eventually we are done with the car itself. Two things we're going to be checking in this particular clip. The first thing we're going to see is how the car shifts with the car on. The second thing we're going to see is how much softer is the pedal itself. Just to, rem just to remind you again in terms of the pedal feel. Let me show you guys. So you can see it is hard to press in. Right, and now we're gonna start the car. So let's just make sure the car is in neutral first. Okay, let's go for it. Bismillah. Okay, foot on the brake. So we did have the intake manifold off. So I'll have to just check that, go, but I'm not too worried about that. The main thing I'm concerned about is pedal uh, feel. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. Feels absolutely great. Back in neutral. So you can hear the vacuum. You can see how much softer it is. See there? I'll show you guys from this angle. See how much softer it is. Might need to be played a little bit more, but you can see that soft, soft. See how quickly I can do that. That's soft, right? And now with the car off, now with no vacuum on the inside, it's still okay. There's still a bit of vacuum in the system, but okay. Now there's no more vacuum, right? You can see that. See how much harder it is to press it. I'm not making this up. It is much harder. I wish I could put some sort of gauge on it just to show you guys how much of pressure is actually required to it. So let's do it again. Put on the brake. So you can see. There we go. Focus. Easy. Easy. Easy easy so we have a win-win situation here and just for fun sakes let's give it a couple of revs so i hope you guys enjoyed that day we still have a few things we need to sort out in terms of the engine wise we've got a couple of engine lights going on here there everywhere but other than that there she's up and running again so we meet again peace